take a turn here because I want to show you guys where I lived before I met my son's father. Let's see if that does this any better because I think I'm going the wrong way now. Chittenden, this should be 12. All the streets are numbered. It used to be a one-way street. Or I'm on the wrong section of it. That's also totally possible. Like I said, it's been a long time. Oh, I'm in the Greek section. Yeah, so this is all the Greek section. I'm on the correct road, but I'm too far down. It's fine. I'll do it again. So like I said, warn of one-way streets. Now we're in an alley. <laughs> and sometimes the alleys were the most efficient way to get around here because the alleys are whatever direction you need them to be and as you can see lots of parking behind these buildings the neighborhood has not really improved since the last time I was here still looks like dive campus housing with absentee landlords junk in the yard <laughs> nothing's changed and that was it we lived right there the looks like the same dive it looked like when we lived there that poor building was so run down and it doesn't look like they've made any improvements in the in the intervening time. But that house had no kitchen appliances, <laughs> like no fridge, no stove, no uh, microwave, nothing. We moved a dorm fridge in and a microwave. And that's how we kept from starving to death while we lived there. We were there for a year maybe two but the rent for that huge um, three bedroom unfinished attic I think it had a basement it was $315 and that is why we lived there because it was so freaking cheap you could not possibly have rented a cheaper place in all your life <laughs> it leaked I mean the windows it was so cold in there in the winter and windy <laughs> And it was just a dive. But we had some epic parties at that house. Um, lots of interpersonal romantic drama. And yeah. But, you know, as these things go, when you're in your 20s, you can do that kind of thing. But that it was an interesting time. Probably the less said about that, the better. A unit down here. This was Crest Tavern, which looks like they tore down the original and put a new building in. Um, but we all lived down here on this little road. So like I said, it's a super cute neighborhood. Um, tiny little one-way streets. Well, this isn't a one-way street, but there are tiny one-way streets back in here. For her. I have not been in this community in a while. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like a trip down memory lane for me also. I mean, it's always had these mature trees and whatnot. Uh, I'm trying to find the community. There used to be a co-op along this road and I don't know if it's still here. And I don't know if it's a co-op anymore. Um, but it was a co-op grocery store, so one of those little tiny stores that you walk into and everything smells like earthy crunchy. That place right there used to be the co-op. It is now Dance and Movement for All. So there you go. That That's changed. I'm going to tilt you over this way because we're only going to do a quick slide by on this place. If I can find it. I can remember which one it is. I think it's this one on the corner. Yeah, it could be this one. Maybe.
when we were all living there, it was, uh, oh my god, we were all like just post-college age, so very much that friends kind of life, and let's see, the, the dude whose parents owned the place, he had one room, a buddy of ours who went into basic training had the middle room, I had the front room, my friend that I moved with when I was pregnant had the basement with another friend of ours that was dating him, and it was just that kind of place. And it was where the parties happened there, and social gatherings happened there, and it was just one of those places in that kind of time. And, and this would take you down into an area that used to be known as the, the continent and the French market. Uh, the French market's been gone for ages. Uh, but at one point in time, there was a really cool little shopping area, and the continent itself was this really cool little um, walking community that, by design, somebody had created to have this walking community. Um, let's turn in here. So this was the back way into the continent. This red building up ahead, they have an axe throwing company in there right now, so you can come and throw axes. But what this is going to do is it's going to drive us underneath part of the community. Um, so you can see all these brightly colored buildings kind of off to the right there. That's where all of the apartment complexes were. And down on the ground floor were all of these little shops that you could shop at. There was a place back in here, a business called the Toy Box. Um, and the Toy Box had a really awesome collection of unique toys and gifts that you were unlikely to find for sale anywhere else. This is the and so I used to go there because it was a really cool place to shop at. And friends of mine had bought me a tavern puzzle there and one of my friends solved it like Christmas Day and then I couldn't put it back together because I didn't know how to work it. Um, so we brought it back here to the toy box because we had heard that there was a guy who worked at the toy box who would just be able to solve it for us and put it back together. Um, that was the very first time that I met my son's father. So you can kind of see here on the ground floor where some of those businesses used to be. Um, but it's it's mostly vacant business-wise relative to the type of place that it was back in the mid-90s when we were all hanging out. You can still see the sign there where it says the continent. When it lights up at night it says continent. It's like half the letters are missing because the guy who changes the light bulb has the most important job. So when I told you guys that uh, we had been at the toy box and that's where I had met my son's father, he lived back in here. And so the party house, we had thrown a party on my birthday and I was so sick. And so we all walked down here uh, later that month after I was healthy and we all had a day off. Um, we walked down into this little community. Now this community itself has a really interesting history. It used to be uh, back in the like turn of the century. It was one of those parks that had like the first Ferris wheel and it had a carousel ride and it was along the river and people would come down in their Victorian dresses and their parasols and you know play the amusement games and it, it was that kind of place before it became all of the uh, apartments that you see now. So it's it's an interesting history um, if you're into that kind of thing. Now this set of apartments, the, the apartments here also date back far enough that they all have really unique layouts. Um, and they have done some building since the last time I was down in here. But you can see off to the left, there's a river down in there. But there was a lot of green space, like these, all these apartments here didn't exist at the time. These are all new construction. 
Um, so there was a whole park here along this waterfront and we had come down here as a group to just have a quick little picnic and celebrate my birthday when I wasn't, you know, gutter crawling, commode hugging sick. Um, and at the time, my son's father lived, I think, in the unit that we just passed. Like I said, they've rearranged it all, so a little hard for me to know where I actually am. I think he lived in this building, like on the other side of this building. And so he was just down here walking around in his neighborhood. We were down here picnicking in his neighborhood because it was really kind of the closest green space we could walk to from that earlier apartment that I showed you. We were all hanging out on a blanket and I see this pair of bare feet walk by and I look up the length of the person and it turns out to be this guy from, from the toy box. And that is how my son's father and I met. <laughs> and met to actually like know each other and talk and you know. So he started coming up to, to our place, you know, cause party house, oh lordy. And hanging out with us and, and that's kind of how he got to know everybody through the, through the group and how he and I got together and yeah. We haven't traveled very far, but we're already in the North Campus area. So when I'm talking about campus, I'm talking about the Ohio State University, which is one of the big 10 and the whole bit. And so you'll see that up in this neighborhood are all the kinds of things you expect to see around a college. Um, Old North Arcade, uh, there's an Ace Hardware here, a space bar. There used to be a place right along here called the library, which was a bar, so that you could honestly tell your parents, hey, I'm going to the library, and not be lying. <laughs> that used to be the Dube, the Blue Danube. It's all closed now, which is tragic. The Danube had been, oh, and Dick's Den. The Danube had been open forever, um, just closed within the last 10 years. Um, it had such a cult following. Uh, Taj Mahal, good Indian food. Indian oven, also good Indian food. And yeah, all kinds of restaurants right up in here. But there's an excellent, uh, is it, it's not Kerouac. I can't remember the name of the bookstore. There's a, a bookstore, coffee shop, place where poets hang out at all the time. Kerouac Cafe? Ah, I'll look it up. I'm, I'm verklempt that I can't remember the name of this place because it's fantastic. If you're looking for a little kind of hole-in-the-wall coffee shop slash bookstore place with a nice open mic kind of vibe, it is the best. Um, so yeah, totally recommend that. All of my poet friends hang out there. It's awesome. This is campus proper off to the right-hand side. And I'm busy looking for the coffee house, so. But there's a Donato's, like you expect. I've already passed, I'm sure I've passed the coffee shop already. Um, but yeah, so I went to Ohio State. I was a, a, an Ohio State University graduate. I was part of class of 2002. I started college late, didn't start until 95. For reference sake, my son was born in 96. And it still looks like campus. People on scooters, people on bikes. A lot of the classes that I took were right here close to High Street. That's what we're on. Um, and they were right in these buildings right in here. Um, this whole north end is where a lot of your social work and your languages and your humanities were all up in here. As the Wexner Center for the Arts back in there is that white grid building that you see. Um, but this is all kind of old main campus right in here. And so you can see the main entrance right here. That's one of the main entrances. Um, mm -mm. Student unions coming up. Yeah, that's that's the garage for the student union there. 
Um, the new student union, I've not been inside the new student union. It desperately needed rehab when I was attending. Um, it finally did get rehabbed, so I, I'm given to understand it's much nicer now. Uh, Drinko Hall, which I always thought was an excellent name for a law school. And this place, Studio 35, which is an incredible theater. owned two has such good ownership taking good care of it and making the changes they need to make on a regular basis to ensure that that business stays open and provides the services it's been doing to the Columbus community um, so yeah if you're ever in town here in Columbus I do recommend going to studio 35 and catching any show there it is such a good theater and such a, a boon to this community now when I was pregnant, <laughs> we lived, I think we lived in that house right there. I can't see the address, but it's the right color. A bunch of us lived there. It was me and two guy friends of mine, and then my son's father stayed there with us a whole bunch, um, just because it was easier. That's where I was, that's where he was. So this next apartment is my son's father and I and our boy. When he was first born, he came from the hospital directly to here. Let's see if I can get us back in here. At the time that we lived back in here, I, we drove a uh, Plymouth Fury station wagon. Uh, 1970, I think, Plymouth Fury station wagon. Land, yacht, and one of these little pylons that you see down on the right hand side yeah the only dent that car ever got was from I think me backing out or in and hitting one of those pylons with the corner of the car so yeah we had top unit right there that thing got so hot I remember riding the bus up here when I was oh eight months pregnant in the middle of July well not the middle of in the middle of June, um, trying to find any place for us to live that we could afford on our income. And I was huge, I felt huge, um, trying to get up to that apartment. And the lady, by the time I got in, I must have had like the reddest face. She's like, oh my God, you need to come inside, sit in the air conditioning, in the office. Here's a cold bottle of water. She was so worried about me because like I said, super pregnant waddling in to take a look at this apartment. Um, my son's father finally was able to, to meet me there and we did look at it and we signed a lease and it was all fabulous. Now one kind of common complaint, I suppose, um, for those of us who've ever lived up in this neighborhood, and one of the things that you can see while driving around Columbus, Ohio, so should you ever take the outer belt around the north end of Columbus, um, you'll be able to see this thing from the highway. Uh, that is the Anheuser-Busch plant that is directly in front of us at this point. Um, they own this whole patch of land from here um, over to the other side of the factory. And originally, from what I understand, the plan was to have like an amusement park, one of the bush gardens kind of places here. So there's this double fence around most of this property because they had intended to have like a zoo and some animal attractions. Um, I think that plan got scrapped ages ago, but this plant, because it's a brewery, it makes this whole north end of town smell like wet barley mash or wet whatever it is you make beer out of mash most of the time um, and you can definitely tell when they're making fresh mash you're like oh to me it smells like uh, fresh baked bread or wet bread like bread dough and so I'm like oh bread dough sometimes it smells like wet peanut butter and I don't like that so much I'm like ew wet gross <laughs> but it's definitely a smell that that you associate with this part of town if you've ever lived near any of the breweries I'm sure you know exactly what that smell is. You can't see it, but off to our left is a Dairy Queen, which was always super nice in the summer because we could just pop on over and get a real quick ice cream cone. 
All right, so now we're going east. And there's a little community here of townhomes. And they were owned by the set of five guys, that, not the ones who own the burger joint, who all banded together to uh, buy this apartment complex. And this was it. So we lived back in here. And I probably won't be able to show you the exact unit, um, but you get the idea. Looks like they've painted since the last time I was back in here. So yeah, this unit right there on the end, that's where we live. I lived in this unit from approximately 1998 to 2003. In 2003, my son's father was offered an opportunity to follow a job opportunity, and we decided to take up that job opportunity, and that ended our time in Columbus, Ohio, and we headed out to Boston.